apple pie breakfast sausage. Here we go. I have my pork butt here. It is a bone-in pork butt. First thing I need to do is obviously take that bone out. And I am using a cut glove. Working with pork butt can be a little slippery and I don't want the knife to slip and cut my hand. So I'll find that bone and I'm just gonna go in and start working around it. Now this bone kind of bends and twists into the meat. So I might take off a few pieces over here just so I have a smaller piece to work with. And there's a little kind of shiner over here too. All right, so that bone comes all the way over here and it starts up here. So again, I'm just gonna kind of use the knife and feel around that bone until we release it. Now, a few things about pork butt as I get through and around this bone here. We chose a bone in pork shoulder just because it's a little cheaper generally and it's a little more readily available. But again, the reason we're using pork butt is for the fat content itself. We're looking for a higher fat content generally for sausage. Uh, because once you, we grind, that's the texture we're looking for with, with the proteins binding to the fat. And there's the bone. You can see it, it's got two grooves here and it's long and kind of awkward to pull out. But just use your knife, feel around and make those cuts. Again, we don't need to keep the roast in any uniform size right now because we will be cutting it down to go through that grinder. So if, if it kind of looks mangled when you're done, that's fine. But bone is out. And now we are gonna cut these into smaller pieces. I'd say about like that is good, um, just so it fits through the grinder really easily and we don't have any issues trying to jam huge chunks through. Now you see all this fat on top of that roast here? We are going to keep that. We're not gonna trim any fat off. Because once again, the ratio of fat on a pork butt is really what we're looking for once we get into the sausage. Binding those proteins and fats together is going to create the texture that we're looking for and it's going to give us tons of flavor. So we don't want to eliminate any of that. One of the things about sausage making is you want to work with really cold meat and grinder parts. Those fats, if they get soft or warm, they kind of get slippery and they won't bind as well. And it's just a lot easier to work with when it's cold. So I'm gonna set this in the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. I've already had my grinded parts in the freezer overnight, so those are gonna be nice and chilled for us. And then we're gonna start the grinding process. With breakfast sausage, you want a really fine grind. So we might actually be putting this through the grinder three times. We'll see when we get there. Got the first grind done, and I kind of rushed through that because we, again, want to keep everything cold. I'm gonna throw this in the freezer for about three or four minutes while I change out the dye on here, and we're gonna go for the second grind. Obviously, when we change this out, we're gonna unplug it just for safety reasons. Oopsies. Now the meat still feels nice and cold in my hands, which is a good sign. And you can see the fat is still kind of separated from the protein there, which is also a good sign. But we do want to work quickly because any heat that gets into this meat is going to kind of slow down the process and make it harder to work with. During the actual grind itself, you want to hurry up too because the, the auger, as that continues to spin, that's creating friction, which is creating heat. Again, something we don't want. So after two grinds, it's still looking a little coarse, a little more coarse than I'd like. So I'm gonna chill it one more time and then we're gonna pass it through for a third time. So we've got through our third grind and this is looking much finer. Uh, looks nice and sticky. Looks like the fat is still separated well enough. So we're gonna put this in the fridge while we start peeling our apples and get our seasonings ready for our apple pie breakfast sausage. For the seasoning of our sausage, we're gonna put some real apple in there, but we also have our apple pie seasoning, which is a great blend of cinnamon and clove. It's got those classic apple pie flavors. 
but we are also gonna supplement that with our classic number 117 breakfast sausage seasoning. The reason we're doing that is we still want some of those sage notes, some of those classic flavors in our sausage, but we don't wanna overpower the apple pie. So we're using about a two to one ratio, which we have measured out per the poundage of sausage that we're gonna be making. We're gonna peel these apples, and then we're gonna put them right through the grinder, just like we did our pork. Another advantage of putting the apples directly in and grinding them like we're going to, is there's a lot of moisture in here, and we might be able to avoid having to add any extra water to our sausage mix. Obviously don't want any peel in there, no seeds. So we're gonna dice these up as soon as they're peeled and push them through the grinder and then we're just gonna fold it into our pork along with the rest of the seasonings. All right, we've got our last little bit of grinding to do with the apples, getting them mixed in here. Then we're gonna add our seasonings, fold that all together. We're gonna get out a frying pan, make some test patties and see where our flavor stands and adjust if needed. All right, so we ended up putting four apples in here, and I think that's gonna add little bits of apple that might add to the texture. Not in a bad way in any, in any sense, but um, there's also a good amount of moisture that we got out of those apples. So again, I don't think we're gonna have to add any um, extra water to this, but we'll decide once we taste. our pork and apple ground together. We're gonna to season it up with our apple pie seasoning and our classic number 117 breakfast sausage seasoning. Now we have these pre-portioned and measured out based on how many pounds of meat we have. So we're gonna mix this together and we have plenty of moisture in here, I can already tell, based on that juice that came out of the apples. Smells pretty, pretty mild, pretty sweet. Definitely get the apple pie seasoning with the cinnamon and the clove. But that's just based on smell and that's our first try, so we'll see what it tastes like. I gotta be patient because I always burn my tongue. First thing, the texture, you do get little pieces of apple. It's not off-putting by any means, it's actually kind of cool. Um, the flavor is pretty mild. I'm getting the saltiness from the breakfast sausage flavoring, which is good. It's time to stuff, so I'm gonna grab our mix out of the fridge and we're gonna load our stuffer, we're gonna get going. I have already rinsed and soaked our sheep casings. Uh, in this case, we're using PS Seasoning Home Pack, which is a natural sheep casing, 20 to 22 millimeter, uh, which is great for snack sticks and in this case, breakfast sausage. Let's get started. So one thing you wanna do when you're stuffing is kind of push it down towards the bottom of the stuffer to see if we can eliminate as many air pockets as possible. Because we obviously don't want those in our sausage because those will create breakage and popping and things like that. And we are easily going to make all of this fit into the stuffer. Now we do have the appropriate size horn on there for snack sticks and or breakfast links. We're gonna crank it until it starts coming out the horn here. We're gonna go until we just see it start to come out and then we're gonna back off to release the tension so that it stops and we can load the horn with our sheet casing. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the water to lube up the horn. Make sure that has enough water on there so that the sheet casing can glide easily enough as we're stuffing so it doesn't get stuck on there. There we go. And with my left hand, I'm gonna keep it straight. And then with the right, I'm just gonna slide it right on there. And on the end, some people tie it right away, some people tie it a little later. I'm gonna tie it right away. So we don't go all the way through. And pull that back to the edge and we're ready to stuff. So at this point, we're ready to stuff, start cranking. Filling up our casing. We're gonna get some water on the table so that once those sausages come out, they don't get stuck on the table e either. Basically, you want fluid movement from here to the table just so that sheep casing doesn't get a chance to tear or get stuck. You 
create issues with the, the filling process. Right hand is going to crank, left hand is going to guide. Nice and easy. The stuffer and the casing will do most of the work. Try and keep it nice and easy. I'm going to stop for a second and kind of coil this up so that kind of has a flow to it. And this is looking really good. It's, we're getting even diameter here. I don't see really many air pockets in here, which is really good. And we'll keep going. And we're to the end there, so I'm gonna stop so I can tie off the end. We have all of our sausage cased up at this point, so now I'm gonna go through and poke out some air holes, squeeze that air out, then we're gonna link them up and we'll be ready for our final taste test. The reason we're doing this is just so that we don't have any air pockets that are gonna create any bursts, um, either in the cooking process or when you bite into it. So to link these up, we're gonna go about every four inches and give it a twist and then we're going to go four inches pinch and then this is the trick instead of having to twist all of these individually we're going to go an extra four put that between get a nice pinch and then we're going to twist that middle one okay so four inches right there Coil this one back up and do the next one. Get out of town. That's all right. That's all right in my book. That's real sweet. That, oh. What do you even say about that? Okay, so you got the sweet notes, you got the cinnamon, the clove. It's kind of like the bacon that we did too. It all comes together and pulls together really well, but you still get the, the savory sage of our standard breakfast sausage seasoning. It just plays really well together and yeah. I was worried for a second that we had overmixed it, but the texture is great. That's a good breakfast sausage. So all in all, this was a great blend of sweet and savory that I think turned out really well. Uh, if you want to see this recipe along with links to some of our products like apple pie or our breakfast sausage seasoning, head to psseasoning.com. And until next time, I'm Chef Jed. Thanks for watching.